Hey everyone, welcome back to the second video in the throwback series. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 5, which is going to be Back to Basics. This is a quick overview of Active Directory structure and how Active Directory works all together. Active Directory is the directory service for the Windows domain networks. It is, it is used by many of today's top companies and is a vital skill to comprehend when attacking Windows. It is recommended to have a knowledge of basic network services, Windows and networking and PowerShell before you go into this. It does help to give you a nice amount of background. You don't necessarily need it. However, it is going to decrease the total amount of Googling that you're going to want to do while going through this room. The detail of specific uses and object will be limited as this is only a general overview of Active Directory. For more information on a specific topic, look for the corresponding room or do your own research on the topic. So what is Active Directory? Active Directory is a collection of machines and servers connected inside of domains that are part of a uh, bigger forest of domains uh, that make up the actual Active Directory network. Active Directory contains many functioning bits and pieces, a majority of which we will be covering the upcoming tasks. To outline what we'll be taking or what we'll be covering, take a look over this Active Directory components and become familiar with the various pieces of Active Directory. Now, one thing to note, there are a number of Active Directory rooms that have been done by the two authors for Throwback, uh, Spooky and Acrylic. I do recommend if you click other profiles, it should show their uh, rooms that they've created. Active Directory is a great room to go through before this, as well as uh, Attacking Kerberos. And if you have a subscription to try Hack Me, you get access to all those. So we're going to talk about domain controllers, forest trees and domains, users and groups, trusts, policies, and domain services. All of these parts of Active Directory come together to make a big network of machines and servers. Now that we know what Active Directory is, let's talk about the why. Domain controllers. A domain controller is a Windows server that has Active Directory domain services, this is shortened to ADDS, installed and has been promoted to a domain controller in the forest. Domain controllers are the center of the Active Directory. Uh, they control the rest of the domain. Uh, effectively, they're the CEO in the company, but on the actual side of Windows. I will outline the tasks of a domain controller below. This holds the ADDS data store, so this holds all of your data about your Active Directory. Uh, think of this as like your phone book. Very, very similar to that in concept. It handles authentication and authorization services. It's how you actually log into your computer. Your computer is going to say, hold on, let me take those credentials, and I'm going to try to log on by contacting a domain controller. And it, if that domain controller comes up and it uh, says, yeah, you can do this, you have valid credentials, it'll come back to your computer and it'll let you authenticate. Replicate updates from other domain controllers in the forest. So to manage load, we can have a bunch of different domain controllers. Uh, and effectively, you have one that manages the rest of them. And you can have different positions within this hierarchy, but it helps spread the load when you have a very big company. And then it allows admin access to manage domain resources. And that's how we can go through and actually uh, do fine-grained permissions on different folders, on different computers, who gets to log in where, and so on and so forth. Let's talk about the ADDS data store. The Active Directory data store holds the databases and processes needed to store and manage directory information such as users, groups, and services. Below is an outline of some of the contents and characteristics of the ADDS data store. This contains the NTD, uh, ntds.dit file. Uh, this is very powerful. If you ever see this just sitting around, you should grab it. This has a lot of information. Uh, this is a data set that contains all of the information of an Active Directory domain controller, as well as password hashes for domain users. Uh, this is stored by default in the system root. Uh, this is a relative directory. If you put it into File Explorer, it will show you the actual uh, system root, uh, and then ntdds. This is accessible only by the domain controller because it has all the information about the domain, uh, which makes sense. It shouldn't be accessible by other computers. This is the keys to the kingdom. If someone gets this, this is game over. So just be aware of that. That is everything that you need to know in terms of physical and on-premise Active Directory. Now move on to learn about the software and infrastructure behind the network. Forest Overview. A forest is a collection of one or more domain trees inside of an Active Directory network. It is what categorizes the parts of the network as a whole. The forest consists of these parts, which we will go for into uh, further detail with later. So there's trees. This is a hierarchy of domains within Active Directory domain services. So this is essentially you have a bunch of different companies. So you can see that we have tryhackme.com, 
east at tryhackme.com and west at tryhackme.com. So think, for example, uh, let me think of a recent company merger that people might know about. Um, at the time of recording this, I believe Oracle is trying to buy TikTok. Um, so TikTok likely has their own domain and Oracle has their own domain. Uh, each of those would be a tree within the uh, total Active Directory network. So if that gives you a good idea, this would be like two different companies. And that's what happens when you merge them all together. That's actually a very common IT process. And if you work in IT right now, you're probably sitting back in your chair and smiling, thinking, you don't know what pain I've gotten through. And I know I understand. <laughs> so domains, uh, those are used to group and manage objects. It, usually this represents a company or a big part of a company. Typically, it's just a company that's recommend, uh, that's represented by a domain. Organize, or organizational units OUs, uh, these are folders, uh, containers for groups, computers, users, printers, and other OUs. Uh, you can put folders inside of folders, inside of folders, inside of folders. Uh, there is a technical limit to that. You don't, that won't ever come up. Um, but you use folders to put people and other objects into, and you can apply permissions uh, going downwards from those. So, for example, things in one folder can do one thing and things in another folder can do another thing. Like, maybe they were able to access some, something that the other folder couldn't. So, gives you an idea. It's just folders. And they actually appear in the uh, ADUC uh, Active Directory users uh, and all that. Uh, I believe they just appear as folders in that, too. Objects. Uh, those are your actual users, groups, printers, computers, shares. Uh, it's anything, like a single thing within your company. So, think of it. Each person has their own account. They each get an object. Uh, you can get templates and other things like that, but generally speaking, think of objects as it's one thing per uh, person or thing or printer because printers are their own thing. Domain services, uh, DNS server. Without DNS, your domain will not work. And again, if you work in IT, you probably are familiar with the DNS haiku of it can't be, it, it's, it's not DNS. It can't be DNS. It was DNS. And DNS is critical. It goes hand in hand with domain services because it's how we access everything with that naming structure. It's how we make tryhackme.com become, you know, translate that to the IP. LLMNR, uh, that is for authentication and other things. Don't worry too much about that right now. And then IPv6 for addressing. Then there's domain schema, which are rules for object creation. I won't get too much into that right now. Just know roughly that these things exist. And again, you can see the forest structure visualized. Users overview. Users are at the core to Active Directory. Without users, why have Active Directory in the first place? There are four main types of users you'll find in an Active Directory network. However, there can be more depending on how a company manages the permissions of its users. The four types of users are domain admins. Uh, this is the big boss. Typically, this is your head of IT. Um, your IT admins will have this. Um, hopefully, they have two accounts where they have one that is a privileged account that they never, ever, ever have to log into unless they absolutely need to, and then they have a normal account, which is not privileged. They control the domains, and they only ones, uh, they're the only ones that can actually access the domain controller unless you explicitly grant other privileges there. Service accounts. Uh, those can also be domain admins. Uh, service accounts typically recommend or represent like different services on the domain. So, for example, and they talk about it a little bit here, SQL services, machine uh, accounts, or not not machine accounts, but service accounts will typically need to have some sort of elevated access so that they can access specific machines or make changes to the domain as they need to. These are, for the most part, never used except for service maintenance. They are required by Windows for services such as SQL to pair a service with a service account. Local administrators, uh, these users can make changes to local machines as an administrator, and they may even hold control over uh, normal users, but they can't access the domain controller because they're only local to the machine that they are able to access. All right, and then last, we have domain users. These are your everyday users. They're your normal users on your network. They can log on to the machines that they have authorization to access and may have local administrator rights to the machines depending on your organization. Hopefully they don't. They don't need this. <laughs> they, don't, they don't need local admin. That's a bad thing. And if you're a pen tester and you see that your user that you've compromised has local administrator, you smile and think, oh, that was easy. <laughs> uh, hopefully they don't, but these are your normal users. Domain policies overview. Policies are a very big part of Active Directory. They dictate how the server operates and what rules it will and will not follow. You can think of domain policies like domain groups, except instead of permissions, they contain rules. And instead of only applying to a group of users, 
the policies apply to the whole or to the domain as a whole. Uh, this is just rules. This is very similar to access control lists, uh, what you can and can't do. They simply act as a rule book for Active Directory that a domain admin can modify and alter as they deem necessary to keep the network running smoothly and securely. Along with a very long list of domain policies, domain admins can choose to add in their own policies not already on the domain controller. For example, if you wanted to disable Windows Defender across all machines on the domain, you could create a new group policy object to disable Windows Defender. Believe it or not, that is actually sometimes done within domains because uh, a lot of times you'll replace it with your own endpoint protection. That if the endpoint protection doesn't play nice with Windows Defender, you can sometimes need to do that. The option for domain policies are almost endless and are a big factor for attackers when enumerating an Active Directory network. I'll outline just a few of the many policies that are default or you can create in Active Directory environment. So the first one here, we have the Disable Windows Defender. Uh, disables Windows Defender across all machines on the domain. Digitally signed communication, uh, always. And this can disable or enable SMB signing in the domain controller. Typically you need this unless you have legacy services. Domain services overview. Domain services are exactly what they sound like. They are services that a domain controller provides to the rest of the domain or a tree. There is a wide uh, range of various services that can be added to a domain controller. However, in this room, we'll only be going over the default services that come with uh, when you set up a Windows server as a domain controller. Outlined below are the default domain services. So there's LDAP, which is Lightweight directory, uh, directory Access Protocol, uh, and that provides communication between applications and directory services. There is Certificate Services, which allows the domain controller to create, validate, and revoke public key certificates. You don't necessarily need to know what this does. This is authentication and other things. Uh, just think of this as like the core service that does all the domain stuff. And then we have DNS, LLMNR, MBT.NS. Uh, all three of those, those are domain. Uh, we have DNS, which is specifically domain name services for identifying uh, IP host names. So uh, this is NetBIOS uh, as well. Domain authentication overview. The most important part of Active Directory as well as the most or vulnerable part of Active Directory is the authentication protocol set in place. There are two types of authentication in place for Active Directory, NTLM and Kerberos. Since these will be covered in more depth in later rooms, we will not be covering uh, past the very basics needed to understand how they apply to Active Directory as a whole. For more information on NTLM and Kerberos, check out the Attack in Kerberos room. Uh, this is, a believe, a subscriber-only room very cool, and this is created by one of the authors of the network. Very cool, definitely recommend checking it out as it has a great write-up on how to uh, attack Kerberos, specifically with Kerberos sting and all that. So Kerberos, the default authentication service for Active Directory, uses ticket granting tickets and service tickets to authenticate users and give users access to other resources across the domain. And then we have NTLM which is the default Windows authentication protocol that uses an encrypted challenge and response protocol. Uh, this is something that will be coming out actually shortly after recording this video, um, is uh, a video on exploiting NTLM that is about uh, zero logon. Uh, if you want a little bit more information about that, I recommend checking out that video. You can find it on the channel as well. The Active Directory domain services are the main access point for attackers and contain some of the most vulnerable protocols for Active Directory. This will not be your last time you see them mentioned in terms of Active Directory security. Now that we understand the basics of Active Directory, we can utilize this knowledge within the lab environment to get hands-on practice with these concepts. And then we'll go ahead and mark this as complete. And the next time we're gonna be taking a look at task six, which is gonna be PowerShell, uh, offensive PowerShell and PowerShell overview.